Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about element number 81, thallium. Any element that's mentioned here is linked in the description below. Other than that, let's learn about thallium. Thallium is the first acutely toxic element since arsenic, element number 33. Sure, selenium, element number 34, cadmium, element number 48, mercury, element number 80, and a few others are not good for you, but they won't flat out knock you dead. In other words, none of them is a good murder weapon, not like thallium. The trick to poisoning someone and getting away with it is to find a new kind of poison whose symptoms no one recognizes and that no one knows how to detect. If you're lucky, people may not even realize that a murder has been committed. Admittedly, this worked a lot better a hundred years ago when dying for no explainable reason was pretty common. Arsenic became a victim of its own success as a murder weapon. It was so widely used as quote unquote succession powder that symptoms became commonly known. A sensitive chemical test developed in 1836 was the beginning of the end of arsenic as a stealth poison. I mentioned the test in the arsenic video known as Marsh's test if you're interested in learning about about how to detect arsenic. Thallium, on the other hand, stayed obscure much longer. The most famous thallium murders occurred in the 1950s, but thallium poisoning cases, both intentional and accidental, occasionally confuse police even today. Tests are of course available to prove the presence of thallium in a victim, but police would have to suspect it before they think to test for it. And in many cases, it has taken months or years before investigators were able to put all the pieces together. If you'd like to check whether you are a victim of thallium poisoning, the symptoms include vomiting, hair loss, delirium, blindness, and abdominal pain, each of which you will notice is a symptom of a hundred other conditions. The signs of murder by lead are generally much more easily recognizable, as previously mentioned in the lead video. So what does thallium do to your body? Thallium can affect your nervous system, lung, heart, liver, and kidney if large amounts are eaten or drunk for short periods of time. Temporary hair loss, vomiting, and diarrhea can also occur, and death may result after exposure to large amounts of thallium for short periods. Here's some more information. The exposure routes for thallium is inhalation, skin absorption, ingestion, skin and or eye contact. Its symptoms are nausea, diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting, and all these other symptoms. Its target organs are eyes, respiratory system, central nervous system, liver, kidney, gastrointestinal tract, and body hair. Thallium was used in a few murders before people caught on to its characteristic symptoms. This sizable lump could do in quite a few people, but isn't it pretty? The colors are from layers of thallium oxide, or Tl2O3, two atoms of thallium combined to three atoms of oxygen. The use of thallium is limited as a toxic element. Thallium sulfate was employed as a rodent killer. It is odorless and tasteless, but household use of this poison has been prohibited in most developed countries. Most thallium is used by the electronics industry in photoelectric cells. Thallium oxide is used to produce special glass with a high index of refraction, and also low melting glass that becomes fluid at about 125 degrees Kelvin. An alloy of mercury containing 8% thallium has a melting point 20 degrees lower than mercury alone. This can be used in low temperature thermometers and switches. Thallium metal has no commercial use and thallium compounds have no major commercial application. Since salis sulfate was largely replaced in the 1960s as a rodenticide and insecticide. Thallus compounds have few limited uses. For example, mixed iodide bromide crystals, TLBR and TLI which consists of thallium and bromine and thallium and iodine. If you're interested in learning about these elements, the link is in the description below or you can go ahead and check out my channel. There you can find the iodine and the bromine video. So these crystals transmit infrared light that have been fabricated into lenses, windows and prisms for infrared optical systems. The sulfide TL2S has been employed as the essential component in a highly sensitive photoelectric cell and the oxysulfide in an infrared sensitive photo cell. Thallophyte cell. Thallium forms its oxides in two different oxidation states, plus 1, Tl2O, and plus 3, Tl2O3. Tl2O has been used as an ingredient in highly refractive optical glasses and as a coloring agent in artificial gems. Tl2O3 is a N-type semiconductor. Alkali halide crystals such as sodium iodide have been doped or activated by thallium compounds to produce inorganic phosphors for use in scintillation counters to detect radiation. Thallium imparts a brilliant green coloration to a Bunsen flame. 
Thales chromate formula TL2CRO4 is best used in the quantitative analysis of thallium. After any thallic ion, TL3 plus present in the sample has been reduced to the thallus state TL plus. Soluble thallium compounds are toxic. The metal itself is changed to such compounds by contact with moist air or skin. Thallium poisoning, which may be fatal, causes nervous and gastrointestinal disorders and rapid loss of hair. So the discovery of thallium was controversial. William Crookes of the Royal College of Science in London was the first to observe a green line in the spectrum of some impure sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and realized that it meant a new element. Here we have the line spectrum. It was a green line. He observed it in sulfuric acid, which consists of hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. He announced his discovery in March 1861 in Chemical News. However, he did very little research into it. Meanwhile, in 1862, Claude Auguste Lemay of Lille, France, began to research thallium more thoroughly and even cast a small ingot of the metal itself. The French Academy now credited him its discovery. He sent the ingot to the London International Exhibit in 1862, where it was acclaimed as a new medal and he was awarded a medal. Crooks was furious, so the exhibition committee awarded him a medal as well. So again, a quick review. Rarer than tin, thallium is concentrated in only a few minerals that have no commercial value. Trace amounts of thallium are present in sulfide ores of zinc and lead. In the roasting of these ores, the thallium becomes concentrated in flue dusts from which it is recovered. British chemist Sir William Crookes discovered in 1861, again, by observing the prominent green spectral line generated by selenium bearing pyrite that had been used in the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Crookes and French chemist Claude Auguste Lemay independently isolated again in 1862 thallium showing it to be a metal. Thallium is found in several ores. One of these is pyrites which is used to produce sulfuric acid. Some thallium is obtained from pyrites but it is mainly obtained as a byproduct of copper, zinc, and lead refining. Thallium is also present in manganese nodules found on the ocean floor. Thallium, TL, chemical element, metal of main group 13 of the periodic table, poisonous and of limited commercial value. Like lead, thallium is a soft, low melting element of low tensile strength. Freshly cut thallium has a metallic luster that dulls to bluish gray upon exposure to air. The metal continues to oxidize upon prolonged contact with air, generating a heavy non-protective oxide crust. Thallium dissolves slowly in hydrochloric acid. Here's the unbalanced and the balanced formula for hydrochloric acid reacting with thallium. Thallium with hydrochloric acid produces thallium chloride and hydrogen gas, the balanced formula. 2 moles of thallium, 2 moles of hydrochloric acid, and 2 moles of thallium chloride with hydrogen gas. Thallium also dissolves slowly in dilute sulfuric acid. Here's the reaction of thallium with sulfuric acid, thallium sulfate, and hydrogen gas. Here's the balance formula. 2 moles of thallium combined with 1 mole of sulfuric acid to produce thallium sulfate and hydrogen gas. And here's the unbalanced formula. Here we have thallium combined with nitric acid to form thallium nitrate and hydrogen gas. And here's the balance formula. So in nitric acid, thallium dissolves rapidly. Thallium dissolves slowly here, slowly here, but rapidly here. Thallium dissolves slowly in hydrochloric acid and dilute sulfuric acid and rapidly in nitric acid. So two crystalline forms of the element are known. Close packed hexagonal below 230 degrees Celsius or 450 degrees Fahrenheit and body centered cubic above. Natural thallium, the heaviest of the boron group elements, consists almost entirely of a mixture of two stable isotopes, thallium-203, which makes up 29.5%, and thallium-205, which makes up 70.5% of the total amount of thallium isotopes. Traces of several short-lived isotopes occur as the K products in the three natural radioactive disintegration series, thallium-206 and thallium-210, which are part of the uranium series. Thallium-208, which is part of the thorium series, and Thallium-207, which is part of the actinum series. Here they are. In its oxidation state of plus 3, thallium resembles aluminum, although the ion Tl3 plus appears to be too large to form alums. An alum is a type of chemical compound, usually a hydrated double sulfate salt of aluminum with the general formula XAL2-12H2O, where X is a monovalent cation such as potassium or ammonium. By itself, quote-unquote alum often refers to potassium alum with the formula KAL2-12H2O according to Wikipedia. The very close similarity in size of the singly charged thallium ion TL plus and the rubidium ion RB plus makes many TL plus salts, such as the chromate, sulfate, 
nitrate and halides, isomorphous, i.e. have an identical crystal structure to the corresponding rubidium salts. Also the ion Tl plus is able to replace the ion Rb plus in the alums. Thus, thallium does form an alum, but in doing so it replaces the M plus ion rather than the expected metal atom, M3 plus, in M plus or M3 plus, SO4 2, 12H2O. So that was Stallium explained in as a short amount of time as possible. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, thank you everyone for watching. Have a great one.